And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game I was very anticipated to play, and that is Pantone the Game. Now, if you're like me, or maybe not everyone's like me, but I like to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and look at all the different paint colors and imagine what they would look like on a wall. And I always like having those strips, those color swaths to look at and go, mm hmm, this color would look good. I don't know what it is. As a kid, I would take those home and just try to do something with them. Uh, I thought it was neat that they were free. Um, okay, maybe it's just me. But I like colors. I like bright colors. This is a game that's essentially a trivia style game, Pictionary style game, but you're not drawing a picture. You're using these color swath cards to get people to guess it just by blobs of color and maybe a few clues along the way. Here's how it plays. So this game comes with a tray full of different colors. There's going to be four cards of each of the colors. The colors show Pantone in the back. We, you have the full-blown colors here in the front. You also have a stack of cards. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to draw three cards. So I'll look at my cards here. I got Godzilla, Blue Man Group, and Winnie the Pooh. All right, so in the first round, you're going to be making a picture, trying to get people to guess one of your clues. So maybe for my first one, I might do something like this. I might, you know, do that, okay? Now that's Godzilla. And each person's going to go around the table and they get one guess. If they guess it correctly, they're going to get five points. And you've about five seconds to make a guess. If no one guesses it correctly and it comes back to me, I give a hint. On the card, there are several hints, so I might say movies. Well, that would be the first hint I give. And then everyone has another guess. Then I might say Atomic and Terror and Tokyo. If no one guesses it, uh, by that time, then no one gets any points. I've never seen that happen. Um, now, if someone guesses it, then the person who makes the picture and the person who guesses it are going to get that many points. After everyone has done one round of this, you will do it again, except this time you can only use one card of each type. So that's going to be a much harder thing to do. So maybe I might, you know, do something like, uh, oh, I can only use one brown. You're right. I don't know. Now that's Winnie the Pooh, that's going to be much harder. And then uh, again, I can give the hints here, which are book, stuffed toy, honey, and hundred acre. <laughs> and then the last round of the game, you can only use three cards total. Although you can use cards that are the same color. So this might be my clue here for the blue man group. And that's it. After three rounds, you will total up everyone's points and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. So the box here is kind of nice, it, but it slides in, which is kind of a weird way to have a box. I do like the insert for this because it has these nice recess things where you just press against them and get the color cards. The problem is these cards are not good quality. They are already getting beat up from the plays that we've done of it. And there's also these question cards here for the game, and they're very nice and they fit here in the slots and there's room for more because I assume more will be coming. The writing on the card is easy to read, the hints and the clues, there's actually no way to keep score, so you're going to have to keep score on a separate piece of paper or on an iPhone or something like that. Uh, but um, for the most part, I guess for the price point, the components are okay. I really like Pantone a lot. And I'm saying that because there are a few problems with the game that I need to point out. One, I've already said the quality was not amazing, it's okay. Two, the cards in the game, and this, is, this may or may not be a problem for you, uh, the, but they're very pop culture-ish-y, which means there is a lot of video game characters, there is a lot of comic book characters, there's a lot of cartoon characters. And while I have no problem with that, it works well, I like it, that's great for me and my friends, but I can't take this game and play it with mom and dad. I can't take it because they won't know half the characters. Now, this is of necessity because there's not going to be a lot of differences between Bill Gates or uh, former President Barack Obama. And, and, you know, there's not a lot of all these different famous people that you go through. There's going to be some color differentiation, but they aren't necessarily associated with, for example, a very particular outfit. Maybe some are, but most aren't. There's a few historical people in here, but not too many, not famous sports stars or things like that. But 
everyone knows what Super Mario looks like. Everybody knows Sonic the Hedgehog, etc. Or at least people who play video games and such. So just keep that in mind. That means that this may not work with all groups. The other problem with the game is there's just not that many cards. There's a lot of cards in the game, but you will go through them fairly quickly, and once you go through them, you kind of start knowing what to look for. Like, oh, okay, I haven't seen, you know, Godzilla, and there's green, that's probably Godzilla. So, this game needs expansion stat. I just wish there was more cards. It also, wouldn't, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea just to have a, an app on the phone, you know, that came up with many, many, many different things. Uh, but despite that, it is really entertaining. The clue system works really well. Uh, very rarely do we get them when you just put out the object itself, although sometimes you do. But after the first clue, very often they're guessed. After the second clue, guess a lot. I've seen some go to the third clue. I've never seen them go to the fourth clue. And I've never seen anyone not guess them at all. So the clue system is pretty straightforward. In fact, sometimes you get it because of the clues and you're like, okay, that's probably so-and-so. Oh yeah, those colors make sense, boom. It's also funny. It's funny to see how people put the colors together. It's very challenging to use just three cards or to just use one card of each color, although it's less challenging than you think. And you say, I'm not good at drawing, but are you not bad at maybe putting some cards in a table? There's nobody who's a Pantone master who's going to be able to be like, look at the way they put those cards together. You can only put them together so many ways. It's going to be blobular for everyone. So if you like the idea of Pictionary, but that I can't draw, this is going to be in your wheelhouse. I like this one a lot. Like I said, wish there was more cards, more stuff for it, but maybe that's on the horizon. Meanwhile, I'll have a lot of fun playing Pantone the game. Dice Tower Judgment approved!